Marvel's battlefield. But this vessel has mastered the game. A custodian of deep spiritual insights, busting the tricks of darkness and projecting the truth of light. A man of the spirit with an in-depth understanding of kingdom mysteries and principles. A tool of massive life transformation and a vanquisher of weapons fashioned by hell. Prepare to be shot out from where you are to where you are meant to be by the power of the spirit and the vehicle of his ministration. Of Vesters, let's welcome Augustus. Please stand to your feet, Harvesters International Christian Center, and let's make welcome an Apostle of God and found out the Eternity Network International Apostle Joshua and your legs are not heavy. Wine Press 2022. Let's welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight and we bless you for this opportunity to grow, to be taught, to be imparted. Lord, we thank you for this great ministry, this great vision. Thank you for Wine Press. The Bible declares that they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. I pray that we will rise and we will go from glory to glory. Let your word come with power. Let it come with clarity. Let it edify us. Let it build us tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus that within the time that we have to share, let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. And as always, let Jesus be revealed and Jesus glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. My joy to be here. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Let me very quickly bless and honor the man of God and his dear wife, Pastor Bolaji. Please honor him for me and his dear wife. And I want to sincerely celebrate all of the pastors the leaders and all who are part of this vision let's honor them great work may the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ thank you please be seated while i prayed and inquired of the lord on what to share tonight i had a vision this is how i want to start tonight i had a vision and in that vision it was um, a room and I just saw people moving and they were lamenting and it looked as though something was missing. This is what I saw in my vision. And they were looking around and then all of a sudden light came and the people began to rejoice. And I had the word restoration. This, I wanted to believe every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord I'll be teaching very very briefly on the principle of restoration and then we'll pray I trust that as we pay attention we will not only learn but that the power and the grace to make that word become a reality in our lives will be released even whilst the word comes in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know that it is possible for men to lose people, relationships, as we see all through scripture. In the Bible, people lost loved ones, people lost relationships. In the Bible, it is also clear that people can lose things. 
we see that things were lost in the Bible. For instance, the story of the axe head that fell. He said, alas, master, it was borrowed. So we see that people can lose things. But we also see from scripture that people can lose time. That it is not only men that can be lost. It is not only things that can be lost. But the greatest loss as recorded by scripture and from scripture is time. Is that true? So God is able to restore people. We see that in stories that depict resurrection. Resurrection is a type of restoration. And then we see God restoring things, not just over the lives of individuals, but even over nations. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow. And there was a complete restoration of the economic dignity of a region. But then the Bible also says that in God's dealing with men, he is so mighty that he sustains the power to restore even time. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Joel 2 and verse 25. Joel 2 and verse 25. I will restore to you the years, not just the things, you can have the restoration of relationships. You can have the resurrection of things. But let me tell you, real dominion is dominion over time. Because the unit of destiny is measured in time. When you meet a dying man, he will not ask you for more things. When you meet a dying man, his greatest request is time. Because if you can give him time, every other thing can be found in time. Are we together now? When you lose relationships under a certain condition, you can easily have another relationship. When you lose things, people have lost monies, people have lost properties, and with time, they got it back. But when you lose time, there is no factor that guarantees the restoration of time again. Are we together now? Yes, because it is not given unto men to live in the past physically. But God is saying, in my dealings with men, I can restore people, I can restore things, and I can restore time. This is very important. I examined the subject of losses. Um, it is a word that people do not want to hear. The moment I mention a loss or losses, either to a businessman or someone who just lost a loved one, it's not a word that anyone wants to be associated with at all. Is that true? When you hear the word profit, you hear the word gain. Now, these are words that we like. Nobody wants to hear the word loss or losses. And by the Spirit of God, very quickly, I just want to exhort us. I'm not really doing an extensive exegesis of God's word, just a charge, really, so that we can pray. A few reasons why individuals lose in life. Please pay attention. Tonight's message can be a lifeline for someone based on that which God showed me. There are a number of reasons. And in as much as every new year, every new season, we aspire for the best of God in our lives and our destinies, if we do not know what makes for a life of defeat and retrogression, we will continue repeating the same mistakes. And you have every new year look like the former year in spite of the prophetic words. And so God is giving us a chance by his word to be able to ascend through knowledge to a higher realm where our results become predictable. You can know that you are done with losses and retrogression. Are we together now? Our confidence in this kingdom is based on the integrity of God's word. There are two qualities of God that 
the believer builds his confidence upon number one is his integrity number two is his ability these are the pillars of the believer's confidence so when people ask you based on what do you think god will not fail you it is based on his integrity god is not a man that he should lie he is not a man you may have heard it in my teachings that god only became a man but he is not a man are we together yes the bible tells us that men lie they don't lie because they are bad they lie because they are men so he says god is not a man that he should lie he's not the son of man that is the basis of your confidence it means god only says what he can do so if you hear god say anything he has vetted his ability to find out that 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 what he has said it is within his power to make it come to pass are we together now this is very powerful so his integrity and his ability let's examine a few reasons why people experience losses of all kinds in their lives are you learning already number one lack of discernment hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 let's study a few scriptures as fast as we can hebrews 2 and verse 1 lack of discernment it says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard less at any time we should let them sleep say discernment discernment is very important isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 these are scriptures that show us the danger of not having discernment isaiah 1 3 it says the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib but israel does not know my people do not consider that means these people have not built themselves to be able to discern we lose in life because we do not know how to discern the faculty of spiritual perception the ability to know what god is doing in these days if you lack discernment you will lose a lot of things it can cost you even your bishopric he said his bishopric let another take are we blessed yes. ezekiel chapter 12 let's look at one or two more scriptures ezekiel chapter 12 we'll start from verse 1 and 2 ezekiel chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 the word of the lord also came to me saying please let's read verse 2 together ready one to read son of man thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious people it says which have eyes to see and see not they have ears to hear and hear not for they are that is his definition of lack of discernment that you have eyes and yet you do not see you have ears and you do not hear people lose because they do not have the ability to see and to hear very very powerful acts 28 and verse 27 let that be the last verse for this and then we'll jump to the next acts 28 and verse 27 he said that for the heart of these people is wax gross for their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes hear with their ears understand with their heart and should be converted and i should heal them there is a relationship between discernment and restoration there is a relationship between lack of discernment and losses many people many believers have not trained their faculty of spiritual perception to discern discern people discern opportunities discern seasons he says and of the sons of issachar men who had the understanding of the times and that they knew what israel ought to do and because of that their brethren were at their command number two why do people lose in this kingdom carelessness number two carelessness hebrews chapter 2 
verse 3 where we read Hebrews 2 and verse 3 just pay attention to these scriptures and let them speak to your spirit Hebrews 2 and verse 3 how shall we escape it says if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them which heard him how shall we escape when there is neglect carelessness many believers have demonstrated carelessness across every area of their lives carelessness with opportunities carelessness with moments carelessness with prophetic words are we together now yes, yes. judges chapter 11 let's read from verse 30 we're discussing the reasons why people lose in this kingdom as an attempt to understand the value of restoration and we said number one is lack of discernment the absence of it number two carelessness are we there judges 11 from verse 30 remember the story of jephthah pay attention it says jephthah vowed a vow unto the lord you will see the consequence of carelessness right now carelessness with words carelessness with commitments it says if thou shalt without fail deliver the children of ammon unto my hands we're reading to 35 then it shall be that whatsoever comfort out of the door to meet me when i return in peace from the children of ammon shall surely be the lord and i will offer it for for a bond offering say carelessness this is a man who is speaking carelessly this this is clearly emotions that lord if you give me victory anything that comes out of my house i will give you as a bond offering follow closely so jephthah passed over to the children of ammon to fight against them and the lord delivered them into his hands are we still here and he smote them even until all of those places and thus the children of ammon were subdued before the children of israel 34 he says and jephthah came to mispah unto his house and behold who came out his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances and she was his only child say carelessness we lose things in life because we do not allow the holy spirit to lead us people make careless statements careless commitments and many of us the reason why we've not been able to experience advancement and even restoration is because we make careless commitments carelessness beside her he had neither son nor daughter 35 and it came to pass when he saw her he rent his clothes and said alas my daughter thou hast brought me very low and thou art one of them that trouble me for i have opened my mouth unto the lord and i cannot go back there are people who made commitments that were beyond their financial level emotionally they just met a family of 10 people and said i would take care of all of you to university and the wife said but how what is the financial state of the family said and they clapped for you when you spoke it and they captured it on tv carelessness hasty in speech carelessness especially with words there are people who have said things that they wish they did not say because careless utterances have cost people years damage control for years is someone learning now the reason why we lose in this kingdom carelessness carelessness hmm. in matthew chapter 14 when you read from verse 6 to 11 i don't know if we can look at it is is a parable the parable of the talent remember he gave unto one five he gave unto one two he gave unto matthew 14 let's look at it from verse 6 sorry uh, that was the story of herodias keep it let's just read it since you've, you've put it up the bible says when herodias birthday was kept the when herod's birthday was kept the daughter of herodias danced before them and please who are you ready to see carelessness again 
please read verse 7 one to read whereupon he promised with an oath to give her you see how careless people are how in the world do you stand as a king who is responsible for the destinies of many and simply because a lady danced before you and you were happy and you made a careless statement that anything that means if she said get up from that throne are we together now verse 8 and she being therefore instructed of her mother said give me here john baptist's head in a charger and the king was sorry you, you see it now that every time people do careless things and say careless things eventually why do we lose in this kingdom because we are not thoughtful we are not guided by the word we are not guided by the spirit you see there are three faculties let me teach you this very quickly i wish i had time there are three faculties for by which we interact with this realm and we make decisions i will start from the third the third is emotions it is the weakest of all because it vacillates number two is reason based on logic and principles it is stronger than emotions the highest number one is discernment you see so we have emotions we have reason that is based on principles emotions are based on feelings they vacillate and they change reasoning is based on principles and so there is a measure of stability but the highest is discernment because it is based on the voice of god it is based on the word of god are we together now that means I can look at your life and know which of these faculties you have exalted. If I see the vacillations around your decisions, I know that you have exalted emotions above reason and above discernment. If I see that you are excessively philosophical with no honor to the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life, I know you have exalted reason above emotion and above discernment in this order it is discernment then reason then emotions when the devil wants to destroy people he manipulates them because he's the master of the sense realm to exalt their emotions the moment you get to the realm of emotions you are in satan's domain he will play miserably with you can i tell you this both frustration and excitement can lead to emotions so whether you are responding from a state of excitement or a state of frustration, if you are not careful and you are not guided, you can be careless. This man was excited and he said, young girl, whatever it is that you want, I will give it to you. And she met her mom and said, mom, look at this offer. And the mom said, finally, I have a chance to kill a prophet. And they killed him in a miserable way as though the spirit of God was never upon him. That's the implication of carelessness. Are we learning? Yeah. Number three, very quickly. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Ignorance of the laws of the kingdom. Ignorance. Ignorance of the laws of the kingdom. In Psalm 82 and verse 5, popular scripture, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. They know not. They know not. This is a kingdom that thrives by knowledge. Proverbs 19 and verse 2. Proverbs 19 and verse 2. The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Proverbs 19 and verse 2. Are we there? It says, also that the soul okay that the soul be without knowledge it is not good i was quoting another scripture it says and he that hasted with his feet seen it so it is not good to be without knowledge 
lay your hands on your head in one minute and declare that this year 2022 this is the year you will contend for superior spiritual knowledge go ahead and pray in one minute make a commitment by god make a commitment by his grace ignorance of the ways of god i'm tired of shadow boxing living my life by guesswork hoping i am right you can step into a level of predictability and excellence in your spiritual life through knowledge it says through knowledge shall the just be delivered in the name of jesus christ hallelujah number four why do we lose in this kingdom don't forget what we're dealing with we're examining why believers lose number one i said is lack of discernment number two carelessness number three ignorance of the ways of god ignorance of the laws of the kingdom people lose financially because they do not understand the kingdom truths are located for their excellence on that wise people lose to principalities and powers and demons and live defeated lives because they do not understand the weapons of victory that have been given to the believer just knowing that victory has been purchased for us in christ does not administer victory to you the administration of victory is by light are we together now yes so just being aware does not bless you the bible says in um ephesians 4 and verse 18 it says having the understanding darkened being alienated through from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart it takes knowledge it takes knowledge it takes knowledge it takes knowledge i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified are we together the bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child a child means one who is void of knowledge it says he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all number four why do we lose in this kingdom abuse and misuse write it down please abuse and misuse a major reason why believers lose abuse and misuse just write for reference we may not have the time to go through it matthew chapter 25 when you read from verse 14 to 30 matthew 25 14 to 30 we abuse and we misuse time this was the story of the um uh what they call it now the five the the the, the three uh people who, who were given talents parable of the talents one five one two and the other one and you can see how careful and intentional the first two were the last person was careless he went and buried his talent you bury seeds not talents you see that and when the master came he said i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did not sow so i thought that instead of wasting your talent i do you a favor by burying it here is your talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant abuse the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use abnormal use people abuse opportunities they abuse access they abuse moments and they lose many people have abused access to great people access to great minds we continue to lose because of abuse abuse of privileges remember in second samuel just write it for reference again second samuel chapter 2 well let's read from 12 to 17 but the entire text is from chapter 12 of first samuel first samuel chapter 12 down to chapter first samuel chapter 2 down to first samuel chapter 4 this was the story of the sons of eli but let's just look at chapter 2 first samuel 2 from verse 12 to 17 the bible talks about the sons of eli remember hophni and phinehas the bible says the sons of eli were sons of belial they knew not the lord 
Read to 17. It says, And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifices, the priest's servants came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. Uh -huh. And they struck into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot all that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. It was a privilege of priesthood. And this principle still works till today in the body of Christ. Are you seeing that now? There are privileges that priesthood brings, but there can be the abuse of it. To cut the story, the long story short, it was that when the meat or whatever the sacrifice was boiling, you are given the privilege to put that fork and whatever you bring out, it is your own blessing from the Lord. But the, Hophni and Fini has said, uh -uh, before you boil it, let us clearly look at it and pick you see that they kept taking advantage of the fact that their father was a priest you will see their end remember the story Ichabod when the ark of God was taken they were also captured and killed they brought Eli a report and said listen your sons are dead that was not even what disturbed him they said the ark of the Lord has been captured he fell down broke his neck and that was the end of it abuse 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 and misuse we many of us have misused privileges we have misused opportunities have you heard people say i'm connected to so many people and none of them can help me find out why none of them can help you even though you are close to them you abuse access to their numbers you call them every time and say you are not answering me have you forgotten we are relatives abuse and, and you know, sadly speaking, Africa, we are masters of abuse. We abuse opportunities. We abuse moments. You have acts. Uh, there, there is an entitlement mentality. Are we together now? We just believe that someone somewhere owes us to succeed and come and bring a, a, an honorarium from that success. Abuse and misuse number five why do people lose the final reason i'll give you is tests and trials it is true that when we go through seasons of tests and trials like the bible shows it is possible that we lose things in james chapter one from verse two and three james chapter one from verse two and three here's what the bible says brethren so he's talking to brethren he's not talking to they who are outside of faith count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations he says knowing this your confidence should be based on this knowledge that the trying of your faith worketh patience the trying of your faith worketh patience are we together now it is true that when people are going through seasons of prunings and trainings, it's an uncomfortable truth. But it is true that people momentarily can lose things. Are we together? We read all through scripture that people were constrained. When David was in the cave of Adullam, running away, he lost several things, opportunities, even though he had people there with him. When Joseph... On account of his 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 diligence and his his honor to god and to the integrity of his person he found himself in the prison he lost the opportunity to be the head even though he was a slave there were privileges that were withdrawn from him so there are times that we go through seasons that on account of the dealings of God in our lives, on account of several things, it is possible that we can lose some of these things. Maybe you are a person of integrity in the office, and on account of your integrity, it is possible that momentarily you can lose a few things, privileges, opportunities. These are the five reasons I have examined from scripture and from experience why people lose. Let me do a one-minute recap lack of discernment carelessness ignorance of the laws of the kingdom abuse and misuse then tests and trials 
but i have good news for you that in the name of jesus it does not matter by which means by the power that raised christ from the dead there must be restoration in your life in the name of jesus christ 